Hello, my name is Austin Zhang. I'm a saxophonist in New York City, and I really want to thank you guys for the incredible positive feedback I got on last week's compound interest long-term investing video. Like, I got a lot of really nice comments saying, you know, thank you for the information. I wish I heard this years before. And that was very, that was very nice, but also several messages from you guys, from friends saying that they were going to open up a Roth IRA account this week. They were going to start investing their savings for the long term, planning their financial future. Uh, and that made my whole week. I was really happy to hear, you know, that something I said is going to help another artist, a friend, uh, just be that much better off in the long term. So it reaffirmed for me this need uh, for financial discussion business and entrepreneurship ideas in this particular musician community um, that I'm a part of like, is, is very much needed and I should continue to help if I can. So I'm here again and I'm here to address the number one concern that I got from last week's video, which was um, we were talking about long-term investing in tax-advantaged Roth IRA accounts. Um, and I made the case that you should make it a goal to invest $6,000 a year, $500 a month, or half, half your rent for most people, right? Uh, you should be investing that in large cap index funds over something like 40, 45, 50 years. And if you do that, you're gonna be doing really well. You're probably gonna be a multimillionaire, uh, or if not, like you're gonna be doing very well for yourself, right? Uh, and that's something you should start as soon as possible and it's history tested time tested but what i heard from a lot of you is i don't have anywhere near six thousand dollars a year to invest i'm in debt i don't have any money to invest right and it occurred to me that what a lot of us as musicians have we have an income problem not a savings problem where we're not bringing enough money in uh to cover our bills and pay off our debts much less to save um, so that's what we're talking about today. This big idea of how do I increase my income, right? We could take that in a million different ways, but I wanted to focus today on using digital assets, digital on the internet and assets being something you own that brings you revenue on a pretty consistent basis and something that is not attached to your time, right? So you're not billing somebody by the hour. You don't have to go and do something for them. Something you own that brings you, uh, that brings you revenue. This is so important. And I'm starting here because it's just a no brainer. I truly believe that every artist, creator, musician in 2021 should have something like a, a, some type of digital asset that brings them income because it's a superpower that wasn't available to us 20 years ago. And if we're not taking advantage of it, um, we're missing out, right? And the thing is, the thing to note here is I'm talking about specifically digital assets that can advantage small creators. Uh, so there's this myth that you need 100,000 or a million followers to make any type of sizable amount of money on the internet. And my goal today is to dispel that and give you guys some ideas for ways you can get away from what I call games of scale. Games of scale meaning it doesn't pay off until you are a YouTube celebrity, TikTok star, or whatever, right? And those games of scale, that's your Spotify stream that pays you a fraction of a penny per stream, your YouTube ad revenue, like you're not gonna do anything with that money until you're, until you've built up for a long time, right? And it might not happen for you all. It's not something you can bank on. But I wanna make the case that's there's thousands of creators, um, creators, artists, musicians, just like yourself with audiences of 50, 100, 500, 1,000, whatever it may be, who are, some of them are making a living and some of them are supplementing their income with digital, some type of digital asset on the internet. And I'm one of them, you know, I'm not making a living. I just started making, dipping my toes in this a few months ago. Uh, but to illustrate the point, I'm nobody on the internet. I have a bit more than 400 followers on Instagram. Uh, my business has 120 followers on Instagram. Fortunately, we have an email list of like 300. Still, we're nobody on the internet. 
I started making what I deemed to be valuable digital assets in the form of live streams and live, live recordings of various New York City musicians in October of 2020. So scarcely three months ago, and we've brought in around $2,000 of revenue in just a few months. Um, so I know it's possible to bring in significant money. I mean, that's, I'm not make like I said, I'm not making a living, I just started, but this is a tangible way where you can bring something that will help, that will buy you lunch, uh, that will buy, may maybe the difference between being in the red and being positive for a month, you know? So this, this can be significant. And if you grow it over a long period of time, it could even end up being your full-time job, right? And so I got to this where I'm at by instead of a quarter of a penny here and a fraction of a cent there, I got it by getting 20 bucks here, 50 bucks occasionally, 25 bucks, $10 here. And over three months, that, that does add up exponentially faster than these games of scale. So again, my message is do not spend any of your time and, and attention hustling on these games of scale. I mean, I'm not saying don't be on Spotify or YouTube. Um, I think there are some advantages to being on that platform and there's always the what if, uh, but your time is much better spent on your true fans, your small audience and finding those people who really dig what you do. Um, and again, to further illustrate this point of how valuable $20 here, $30 there is, I bet most of you watching already are making something for the internet. You are putting out your music on YouTube or you're making music for Instagram. Um, and you already have some type of internet presence. I'd be willing to bet that every single one of you watching this has at least one person in your life and your audience who would be willing to tip you 20, maybe even $50 for literally nothing but just continuing to be who you already are right? They just like your work and would like to see you continue doing it. And they would like to support that happening, right? And that could be your mom, if that's all you're starting out with this. And that's great. Uh, it could be your aunt Sally from Pittsburgh, or it could be um, a fan you've never met before who really genuinely enjoys your work. Uh, but I guarantee you everybody watching at least has somebody in their life who, who could occupy that role. And I want to illustrate to you guys how incredibly valuable this this type of person is the person who is willing to pay you for being you right those are your true fans right uh so let, let's do some math here in 2020 spotify paid their artists an average of uh a little less than one third of a penny per stream so if you were to spend your time hustling on spotify to make 20 bucks you know like buy yourself lunch or whatever what you would need is 6,250 streams. So this one Aunt Sally, put another way, this one Aunt Sally who's willing, to, or this one fan, I should stop saying Aunt Sally, um, this one fan who's willing to pay you 20 bucks, maybe even regularly pay you 20 bucks, is worth as much as 6,250 Spotify fans. So if you are in any type of niche, and I would definitely consider jazz musician to be a niche, uh, where you're not, really hoping to be Lady Gaga, then you need to stop playing games of scale and you need to focus on this true fan and getting cultivating more people like them, right? So there's this essay by Kevin Kelly that I think everybody should read. You can just Google a thousand true fans, Kevin Kelly. And he really drove this point home for me. He makes the argument that a thousand true fans uh, can make you a six figure business, a hundred thousand dollars per year. And he is this whole article about why this works in this new information age and why niches are the new uh new way to go um but I, i'm you know you guys can read that in your own time i'm just gonna talk a little bit more basically of you know if you can find one person who's willing to pay you 20 30 dollars then you can probably find two and you can eventually find five you can eventually find a hundred if you can find a hundred i mean you're probably not there yet, but at least you can conceptualize that. I can't conceptualize 100,000 subscribers on YouTube, but I can 
conceptualize a hundred people who like what I do and might be willing to pay me, tip me 20 bucks, right? That's, that seems feasible over time, right? So what would a hundred people who are willing to regularly perhaps, uh, tip you 20 bucks, what would that do for your life? You know, an extra $2,000 a month, you know, could that pay your rent? Could that pay your insurance? Could that help you chip away at your debt or have money to put aside? You know, this is real money we're talking about that can help you, that can help you in a big tangible way. And so how you go about cultivating these true fans is, I mean, step one you, is you have to understand this whole concept. Like, who are you actually talking to when you're posting on the internet? Um, and then I think the next step is you have to do things that are extremely unscalable. For example, say your Aunt Sally tips you $20. You have to send her $15, f a, a bou bouquet of flowers f that cost you $15 back. You, you might be thinking that's crazy. She paid me 20 bucks. Why would I send her, send her that? It's because you have to serve these fans, these true fans. You have to make them feel valuable, make, make them feel seen. I'm not saying you have to be their best friends. I'm not saying you have to call them all up individually, though that might not be a bad idea. Um, but the thing with these true fans is you don't have the capability to go out and find the thousand true fans uh like that would be very difficult for you to do but what happens is you make this one true fan feel like the best person in the world right you you make you make sure you send a very sincere thank you you send them the flowers you send them the card whatever and they gush about you to their friend who is similarly minded and then you have two and you treat them the same way and you have five event two becomes four becomes eight right and you you make you really produce content for these true fans you make them feel valuable you understand who they are what they like to see um and remember you you can be authentic in this whole process because originally they like you for being you so you just show up more consistently and then add this component of excessive gratitude not excessive um no adequate gratitude because that that is a an amazing thing for somebody to pay you some money just for you being you right and this these true fans they become your marketing team they grow on themselves they tell people about the saxophone player who um, they've been listening to all week because they really like their stuff and he's like so much more um, genuine and nice than all this stuff they hear on the radio or something for whatever reason they're attracted to you uh, you'll grow for those same reasons, right? And the other component of that, first you have to cultivate and you know be aware of who your true fans are and serving them and having the mindset of abandoning those games of scale. That's the first half of the equation. Second half is you have to have some type of digital asset or at least a payment gateway um, for those true fans to support you financially if they wanted to. It's crazy to me that some of you, if I came across your video or you're, you're playing on social media or on YouTube or something, and I was like, wow, like, I'd like to tip that person uh, and support what they do. I couldn't even do it if I tried, which is crazy. Like, every musician should at least have a donation form that is fairly easily success accessible, right? You know, it's, if... It's crazy to me that people don't even have some type of donation form. Uh, I guess it's a, a bit of a stretch to call a donation form a digital asset because uh, it's not, not really something you own. But what opening of a payment gateway does in the form of donation form of, or some, some other way is it makes everything you do a digital asset because now everything that you put out on Instagram, on every video you make for YouTube, every story that reaches somebody has the potential now to grab their attention with your art and they can then go and say, wow, I really like this person um, and I'm going to follow them. And eventually they, they, they become a fan of, of your work because you're consistently showing up with quality art that they enjoy and they see that there is a way to support you and 
your your the content that you put on the internet becomes a digital asset the even even if it's free it's it's totally optional for people to pay you but this to tell you the point this does happen for example for myself when i was i was literally in vacation in colombia chilling as hard as i possibly could like i was not lifting a finger for work for a couple of weeks right i was literally in latin america <laughs> chilling and I woke up a couple of days and there was 20 bucks in my bank account that weren't there before because I've been putting out videos like some videos like this, some educational stuff and a lot of music as well. And somebody found it valuable and they found my donation form and they, they decided to support me. And I got even, I even occasionally get some nice messages. And again, this is with a tiny digital audience. It's about really serving people with depth. Uh, and I really like that because it, I think it resonates with our kind of jazz musician artist sensibilities. So what makes a good donation form? I mean, anything is better than nothing. I'll start with that. But this is the one that I have on my website. Um, and what makes this good is two things. There's a custom amount. This is the problem I have with Patreon, for example, because Patreon, there's all these levels. And if somebody wants to tip me say $100 and I don't have that level there, they can't even do it if they tried. I feel like if you allow people to be flexible and donate what they would like to, it's as simple as just having this custom amount. Um, you will be surprised. You know, I have had people donate $100 uh, to my business, you know, and it's, it's it, I mean, it's hard for you to conceptualize because you're on the receiving end, but it's people do get value from from art and from music and they they like to support they like that feeling of feeling good it's like it's like people that tip their waiters at restaurants a hundred dollars it happens you know i feel like anybody who you talk to has been in that type of role can tell you tell you you know it does happen and you want to at least give them the option and then the other good thing about this form is it gives a very easy way to make it recurring because obviously uh, a recurring a donation is can be like infinitely more valuable to you over the long run than a one time so it, you want to make that as simple for them as possible and this is literally the built-in donation form block in wordpress wordpress being the platform that i use to build my website and i guarantee you um squarespace or wix or whatever website builder you use has something similar or if they don't you can use this third-party service called donor box uh, and you, there's, they specialize in nonprofits, but anybody can use it. And you can, it's the same type of form. You can have a custom amount, you can make it monthly, and you can easily embed this into whatever website builder you're using. Uh, this is step one. Every artist has to have at least a payment gateway, and you have to mention it sometimes. You're putting out content for your true fans uh, on a consistent basis, and you, and just be sure to mention, you know, if you like the work that I do, if you are, um, if it has helped you in your life in any way, please consider making a donation, right? And then to make, to make matters even more accessible, uh, you don't even have, need to have a website nowadays to do this. Like you can use like Venmo or PayPal me. Um, yeah, I mean, everybody has a PayPal account. You can make like a PayPal me link where, which it just goes like paypal.me slash your username. Uh, and you can pass that around and I see a lot of people doing that like with busking and that's That's a good way to do it uh, If you don't want to go ahead and build a website and you, you don't have time for that. That's fine, too uh, It's a little tacky to put like your PayPal me or your Venmo link in your Instagram bio for example So one trick that you can use to do that I see a lot of people using Linktree or similar platforms where you can um, list a bunch of links that pertain to you, you and your on internet presence. And so you can put your link tree in your Instagram bio like a lot of people do, and you can have your album, you can have your email list, you can have your, your ebook or whatever, and you can have your PayPal me, me or your Venmo link there as like a donate support my work button. Uh, and people can just do that very easily. So there's, there's no excuse not to have a payment gateway. I won't, I won't spend too much more time on that. Um, but Okay, so for musicians, the other digital asset that you're probably already working on is your album or your EP. So again, 
here's the mindset stop playing games of scale stop hustling it on spotify put it on bandcamp or better yet make an online store on your own website and host your own album uh you're don't worry about the thousand people who don't want to buy it they just want to stream it on spotify real quick worry about the one true fan who loves your music and is happy to pay 10 bucks for it is happy to buy the cd and the vinyl you know use bandcamp because you know their rates are very reasonable uh, especially com when compared to streaming services uh, or like i said even better set up your own store sell physical products sell digital downloads uh, i also really like what um pe people are really creative let me give you some examples um, Fabian Amazon and Linda O, oh, they have this company called Biofolio, uh, where the, you know the, they're an environmentally conscious uh, record label, and so they don't like selling CDs. But instead, they wanted to give people like a physical, um, a physical. Where are some photos of it? I guess maybe in the store, a physical thing that they can hold on and be like, oh, I bought this and I supported this artist. So they make these beautiful origami things. There's no plastic, there's no CD, uh, but they open up into these massive things and you can put it on your wall and they have beautiful liner notes and photography. Uh, and there's no reason why you can't, um, I mean, don't steal their idea, but you know, do something to be creative. Another company that I see making, um, doing this really well is this record label out of Boston. They make these, you can't buy these records on on Spotify or whatever. They just make these limited edition, super, super boutique, high quality vinyls. And as you can see, they sell, they sell them in sets. You cannot buy the individual vinyls uh, and they cost a few hundred dollars. They're not cheap. Um, and this is this is not for everybody. Like I said, the, the whole thing with true fans is you're niching down. You can't you can't sell to everybody. Uh, and so for a certain type of person, uh, they really dig these. You know, they love vinyls, their audiophiles, or what have you, and they they like paying more. Like I said, that person who tipped me a hundred dollars, like he liked the feeling of paying more for art. That made him feel better. So it's actually in that way, it's generous for you them to charge more. They give people ten times the feeling of support, right? That is half the people people way people support art, right? Um, and then from there, you can do Patreon. Patreon's very popular. Patreon's not totally passive because I feel like. Um, there's an expectation for you to make content exclusively for your patrons and such. Uh, but you know, if that's something you enjoy and, uh, you know, go ahead, that's, that's a good way to do it. I think people are, you can go down the educational route, make eBooks, courses, PDFs. I think everybody's familiar with this amazing, um, my music masterclass where they take all these musicians, uh, and they, they teach what they know, right? And this is amazing because I don't know what exactly the revenue sharing is, um, but you know, it's uh, from what I've heard, it's fair. And so you buy this, and my music masterclass gets a little bit, and then th the rest goes um, to support the artists who make the content. And this is way, way more fair and uh, valuable than, like I said, these games of scale. So to recap, um, abandon games of scale serve cultivate true fans do things that are unscalable at first uh for as long as you can manage and and make your true fans feel feel valued you know show up for them consistently and uh know who you who you're talking to when you're talking on the internet right and then make it as easy as possible give them as many products to put their money into give them as many payment the easiest payment gateway that you can manage, make it as easy for them to support you as possible, and you will be surprised by um, who your work resonates with. So thank you so much. I can't wait to see more artists taking advantage of this. And um, yeah, have a, have a beautiful night. Thank you.